North Korea claims it successfully test-fired a new type of missile over the weekend just before the U.S. and South Korea started a joint military exercise. Elizabeth Palmer reports from Tokyo. Good morning. This is the 12th missile test in three and a half months and proof that North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un is fast-tracking a serious upgrade to his already fearsome arsenal. Official North Korean pictures show the launch of what South Korean analysts say were two short-range missiles, at least one of which landed on a tiny rocky island. Kim Jong-un is among the observers, looking especially pleased. We've seen variations of this, the launches and the happy leader every few weeks since January. They may have a cartoon quality, but they're deadly serious. On Friday, there was a huge parade in Pyongyang on a public holiday to mark the 110th anniversary of the birth of North Korea's founder, Kim Il-sung. Unusually, the only weapons on show were neon-lit models. But behind the spectacle, preparations were already underway for the very real weapons test with ominous overtones. It's not the hardware that's got alarm bells ringing this time so much as the rhetoric. The North Koreans are saying the missile is meant to carry nuclear warheads, which it already has. And analysts think we'll be seeing a new nuclear test sometime very soon. For his analysis on the story, I want to bring in Isaac Stonefish. He's a CBS News contributor and CEO of Strategy Risks, which offers advice for companies doing business in China. Isaac, always good to have you. Let's start off with just with this latest test. We always know this time of year before joint exercises, something like this is going to happen. But is this, in fact, a new missile system as North Korea claims it is? There do appear to be new pieces and new details involving this that have some military planners worried. I think what this is, is just exactly as you said, this is North Korea having been really out of the news for so long with Russia and Ukraine and also fears of a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan and North Korea basically standing up, waving its hands and saying, hey, global powers, pay attention to us. So. Isaac, does this indicate that the North is improving its ability uh, with regards to its weapons? Um, they've always had the capability to strike just across the border in North Korea, but what about other targets in the region? I think it is making that statement, but I, I think, again, the real existential threat North Korea poses is its ability to strike South Korea with conventional weaponry. And it's had that ability for a very long time. And because it wants to restart the cycle of we have big weapons, pay us, United States, Japan, possibly China to get rid of these weapons, they do want to signify to the rest of the world hey, we have abilities that will extend beyond just the damage we can wreak on the Korean Peninsula. Isaac, North Korea has conducted 13 weapons tests already this year. That's almost one a week. Why so many? I think they have really <laughs> been not in the spotlight that they want to be. It's You have to be pretty egregious to be on the front page in 2022. And I think North Korea is doing this really a lot for international attention as opposed to the need to really ship up the weaponry that it has. And it's hard to know if this test is going to do it. Maybe it needs to test another nuclear weapon to do that. But it, it really does feel like a cry for attention. Mm -hmm. But but so that to that point, Isaac, I, you know, the world does pay attention to what North Korea does and what Kim Jong-un says. Um, so what kind of attention are they looking for in your analysis? I think they're looking for an attention that will allow the U.S. and South Korea to yield, to come back to the negotiating table and to offer the kind of, I mean, really, for lack of a better word, bribe that has successfully pushed them back away from the brink before. I think it's also important to note that this is just several weeks from the inauguration of a new South Korean president who is considerably more hawkish than his predecessor. And I think North Korea wants to set the tones and wants to start in a state of crisis so that he can try to negotiate things down. All right. Isaac Stonefish, thank you. Thank you.